Hello, here we are at the end of Saturday. I've been out working so hard on the uh, sandstone bowls I've been creating for one of the stores here in town. But now I'm ready to show you how to make this amazing clay so that you can do these kinds of things too on whatever you want to. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you. I'm so excited. I've been watching um, a lady on the YouTube and I actually follow her. I'll put the link to her channel um, in the description here, but she does paper mache. And she was talking about a very excellent paper mache clay that she's created that gets her really fine detail and very smooth surfaces. And so I was looking at her recipe for the paper mache clay and wondering what's so different um, about what she's doing and what we're doing with our paper crete. And so I did some experimenting and here's what I've come up with. And I've, I've made these this little, is a little rows in a, um, well, I'll show you. <laughs> I did it in a silicone mold. But it's, this is, this is just a blob that I've hardened. I don't know that it's a hundred, hundred percent waterproof, but I think when we um, do a sealer on it, it's gonna be just fine. Um, I have soaked these and they, they got kind of soft on the surface, but they didn't, they didn't break. So I don't know, a um, little more experimenting there. But what I do know is that if we will go ahead and seal the project, then our, our thing should be pretty, um, let's say water resistant. We go that far. I also was curious, could I make a little sphere? A lady had asked me if we could do use this product for freestanding um, installations or freestanding uh, creations. I don't know really what she's wanting to do, but um, you're still going to need to use some sort of an armature around it. I created this little half sphere using this little guy here. I was just curious as to what would happen and how it would look. And uh, I got a really nice surface here. It's just, I don't know. I'm excited about this. So I'm going to be using it and I'm going to be testing it. This isn't a clay you're going to use for great big projects, I don't believe. I don't know, we might start getting crazy with it. But, um, and I'm saying we, cause <laughs> I'm counting on you all to do some experimenting with this too. And let's all learn together what we might be able to do here. Uh, but certainly, for adding some really fun details to a lot of your cement creations that you might be doing. Uh, I'm just really excited to be able to share this with you. So I'm gonna stop gabbing here because I can go on too much. And let's show you how this is so done. So what we're gonna start with, I counted off, I don't know if this triggers anybody. I'm sorry, I apologize. But um, toilet paper. I don't know what was that all about. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, um, 15 squares is what I've got here. And I'm gonna put them in my in my little bowl. I'm just gonna kind of tear them up. The lady that is making the paper mache, she actually uses a little mixer and uses a little hand mixer and gets this all blended up. But I'm not going to because I don't have one. The only mixer I have is my KitchenAid in the house, and well, that's for cakes. So <laughs> this is what we're gonna do here. Um, inside of here, we're gonna add just a little bit, maybe two or three tablespoons of vinegar. She's using vinegar, and I'm thinking it's because of the um, flour that we're going to use in here when we're all finished. So anyway, I'm gonna also add now I made this recipe using an off brand of white glue and it did not, um, it did not set as hard 
as the Elmer's glue all. So I'm going to stick with the Elmer's glue all just from my own experimenting. I also I also tried wood glue wood glue and cement. Doesn't work. So don't go this there. Is what I found so far that's working pretty good. So we're just gonna mix this up. And I'm just using a wooden craft stick and just mixing it into this glue, the tissue, and smashing it and moving it around rather vigorously. Not as fast as an electric mixer would, but the idea is to get the paper all dissolved. So if I'm seeing any kind of lumps in there, I'm going to smash them out of there. We want it to be uh, relatively smooth. This is going to get mixed up a lot more as we need this. So here's what we've got. Okay, that's what it looks like now. So that's with the three tablespoons of vinegar and the half a cup of Elmer's glue all, 15 squares of toilet tissue. Now to this, we're going to add, put it in a paper cup, add, we're gonna, and here's where this is dry Portland cement, so I'm going to put this on until I get it all mixed in. Because I'm inside, and um, I so a half a cup of Portland cement. A half a cup of all-purpose flour. So the flour is the addition that she's put in her paper mache. I think that's what's giving us the really smooth texture. So I've got that all mixed up now. The other thing that's going to go in the glue is a quarter of a cup. She's also using this. She says that um, the DAP DAP, D-A-P, um, brand of this doesn't mix with the cement, so she uses this one. So about a quarter of a cup of this drywall compound in there. Also, may add maybe what's adding to the smoothness, so we're going to mix this in. We're going to add in So once it is uh, you've turned it out of your bowl, you want to knead it and I'm just using a plastic uh, cutting board here. You could have a little bit of extra flour and cement ready, just like you, as if you're, you know, as if you're baking. And you may need to add just a little bit as you go and you continue to knead it. Once it's at this nice stage here, like this, then you can put some lotion. I always use this uh, tummy butter. Um, on your hands and continue kneading it. And it's not going to be sticky to your hands anymore. There we go. So it holds its shape. It's, it's fairly elastic. You can roll it out. This is how I made the bricks on the little flower pot that I'm working on. And use your cutter. I also have flowers on the uh, little flower pot and I've used the cookie cutter. And this is just the part I, I am just so jazzed about because now 
I can I can make these kinds of little add-ons that will go on the round flower pots that I create right I don't just create flat ones and so if I've got a cement in a mold it's going to be flat and hard but now these can mold around the the rounded parts and I'm just super excited about this it doesn't come back the next day so this will be good to use as long as you put it keep it in a plastic baggie uh, for a good portion of the day while you're working on your projects um, but I've noticed the next day it's still soft but when you go to roll it out it gets kind of crumbly so only make what you're going to use in that day because it won't I've not anyway had luck with it coming back nicely the next day but let me show you what else it does so I have a lot of these silicone molds around because you know I used to do a lot of a lot of cakes I don't do a lot of cakes anymore but Once clay, a just a little of the lotion on my clay and inside my mold and now I can put this in and it pops it out and you want to put a little beaded edge around the top of a pot. Look, how you can just roll this with your hands and create a little snake. Now you've got this little bead. I, I don't know. I'm super excited about this and I've been using it to create this pot. And I am sealing it with an acrylic sealer. But I, I intend to sit this pot outside, so that's going to be our experiment when I have this all finished. And it's going to be sitting out, and I will intentionally put it out where my sprinklers are. I know. I know. It's a lot of work, but I'm going to sacrifice for knowledge. <laughs> Fingers crossed, because it is going to be cute. But um, I want to see how it's going to stand up in the elements in my backyard. And so, uh, so again, I'm going to put the, uh, the recipe on the screen. I'll also have it in the description. I'll also put the link to the lady who um, kind of, what did she, she, she kind of um, inspired the, uh, this thought and idea and experimenting. What can I do to get a really nice clay? And this is Paper Crete, a step above. Um, so it's taking our usual paper crete recipe and doing something great with it so I don't know I'm I'm really liking it it doesn't smell weird and it just it just plays so nice so if it's too sticky go ahead and you can add a little bit more of your cement and flour mixture to it you just don't want to add so much that it's going to start setting and getting hard on you sooner than you're ready for it to not that anybody really needs a concrete but I also, this little guy right here, out of my baby fondant mold, used the clay in the fondant mold and was able to take the baby out before he was set. And that's, the, that's what I'm wanting. I'm wanting to be able to have these little um, add-ons still pliable so I can add them to my creation um, without it getting damaged or I want it to be able to be moldable to this is the thing that's exciting to me is that this will come out of these molds or I can make flowers with cookie cutters I can do things and and it's very uh, malleable and then I can add it to my creations Let's see if we can get this out. Probably if it's set in there a little bit longer. There we go. There he is. He came out of the little mold. Look at that. Let me know if you're excited too. Um, give it a try. See what happens. You know, now I've made this, I need to do some more on my flower pot. 
Let me know if you've tried it. Let me know if you've had success with other things. Let me know if you um, have experimented with this and tell me what you've learned from it. This is my, my first week with this little uh, bottle of clay here that I've got. This is my first project I've done with it. I've had a few tests and I have enjoyed the tests I've done. So when you practice, don't practice on anything major, okay? Just practice and see what happens. Let me know. Have a good evening.